Andy Johnson, Minnesota State University. We're looking at schema theory, learning, and comprehension. First of all, a schema is an organized knowledge structure like a file folder in your head. It is the classic building blocks of learning and thinking. It's how we organize information. Schema are important, and plural of schema is schemata, by the way, for comprehending, learning, and remembering. It creates the structure that we use to remember stuff, to learn stuff, to organize new information that's coming in. The more schemata that we have, the more developed our schemata are, the easier it is to learn and to comprehend. And I'm talking about comprehending in terms both of reading comprehension, but comprehending new theories, new ideas, new concepts, comprehending as learning. The rich get richer, the poor get poor. The more you read, the more you learn, the more you experience, the easier easier it is for you to take in and organize more information in learning. Schema are based on your past experiences and your personal experiences are powerful. All right. Your schema, for example, based on reading instruction or learning or whatever, is based on your personal experience. This is why change is so often hard to occur in an educational context in a school because we have these personal experiences. I knew a kid who I did this once and all right. These are schema based on our personal experiences. However, human survival is based on our ability to adapt adopt and adapt schema, adopt and adapt to physical and mental stimuli, adopt and adapt our schema when we encounter new physical stimuli out there in the world and mental stimuli in the terms of information. And remember, when we act upon the world, the world acts upon us, meaning that it changes the structure of our brain in terms of new neural pathways. All right. This old Piaget concept, assimilation, is when we are adding information to a new file or to a, an existing file. All right, this new information kind of corresponds with what we already know about spiders, so it's pretty easy to assimilate. Accommodation when occurs when you get a new information and it doesn't match the file folder in your head, so you have to restructure the file folder. Or when you have a file folder or a schema, uh, that does not accommodate this new information, new information that is totally new to you. You have to accommodate. Here is a kind of uh, 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 an example, a, a, a illustration of what a schema might look like related to eggs. You see all the related information there. All knowledge that we have is constructed. It's not replicated. We don't look at reality and reflect it exactly in our head. We don't read and it's not re re replicated in our head. It's constructed, meaning we use the file folders based on our past knowledge and experiences that mixes with new information and we construct. So every person experiences an event, a text, a situation, and they all construct it just a little bit different based on their own experiences and knowledge. Comprehension, then, is constructing a schema that provides a coherent explanation of the things that we experience. It has to be coherent and it has to make sense. Comprehension is creating meaning. In learning and in reading, we like to use graphic organizers. These become an external form of the in internal structure of the schema. We use them as pre-reading or pre-lesson types of things so we can show students the structure of what is to be learned. This enables them to better encode and internalize that information. These are great during reading, during lesson, and post-reading and post-lesson activities as well. It becomes an external form of that internal structure. So, the functions of schema it provides a scaffolding to assimilate text information or any lesson information. Here's the scaffolding, here's the structure, and enables us to see the structure of that new information and how one thing relates to the X. Then the next. Schema facilitates the allocation of attention. You have the structure, you kind of know about a, a thing, so you know which things to pay attention to, which things are more important and less, 
what are the superordinate and subordinate categories. You know what to pay attention to. Schema enables you to go beyond the information there to elaborate, all right? Since you have a basic file folder in your head, it doesn't have to spell out everything in the text or in the lesson. You're able to fill in the blanks. And schema enhances memorizing and summarizing. You have this nice structure, this nice file folder to put the new information around. It's not just a mishmash of unrelated facts and things. So that enables you to memorize and to summarize. Reading and schemata. Now realize that when you are reading, the brain is analyzing stimuli on many levels. You're looking at the letter sounds, graphophonemic. You're looking at word parts, more themes, the smallest uh, unit of meaning. Word parts, roots, prefix, suffixes. You're also looking at context clues, semantics. Syntax, that's grammar and word order. And pragmatics, the context that is found in. For example, it was a long run. The meaning of that depends on the context. It could be a long run in the stocking, a long home run, a long running run, all right? So pragmatics is part of analyzing stimuli or analyzing the message. Text analysis is interpreted. Text is analyzed and interpreted on the basis of hypothesis testing. Remember, in reading, nine times more information is flowing from the cortex down than from the thalamus up. That means information is constantly going up. We're predicting what the next sentence might be or what the meaning might be. And then we're using uh, cues, letter cues, to confirm or reconstruct uh, the meaning. So reading is an interactive process. What is in the head mixes with what is on the page, but mostly we are hypothesis testing. We are predicting. Ken Goodman calls it a psycholinguistic guessing game. We guess and then we use text clues to confirm our guess or change our hypothesis. So the implications for your teaching is are these. You need to pre-teach concepts to build requisite knowledge. Very rarely should you have students read things cold. That is, they know nothing about it. Here it is. Read the text. You need to build that. You always need to integrate new to known. This is what you know. This is how this new stuff relates to what is known. You need to highlight the structures of the material to be learned or read. That's why I like the graphic organizer or simple outline. It's called an advanced organizer. Anything that shows the structure of what is to be read or learned is an advanced organizer. And knowing that providing packets of factoids, little things here, there, limits learning. If you try to cover too much, you end up covering up what is to be learned. All the research I've looked at on learning says that you need to cover less information more deeply. So think in terms of carrots with lots of roots instead of just covering a whole bunch of facts. Sometimes when we talk too much, we end up providing too much information. Sometimes when we teach too much, we end up creating a less meaningful experience. All learning, all reading is about creating meaning. Here's a real simple activity that you can do for expository text. I call it 3 to one It's similar to KWL or KQL. Before reading or a lesson, what are three things you know about? Insert topic here. And in large group, you can actually list those on the board. What are two questions you have about? Insert topic to be read about or learned there. You read the text to do the lesson, and then what is one thing you learned about afterwards? And the students identify something that is interesting or important. I like to call it 3 to one because it provides structure. All right, that has just been some information on schema theory, learning, and comprehension.